Now on BBC One, it may be trivia, but it's celeb trivia. Of fame. This is the show that examines the famously famous. Before we begin, apologies to the researcher we sent to tell Bjork she'd been turned down as a panellist on this week's show. <laughs> <laughs> no such antics tonight with this lot, I hope, as we meet our teams for this evening. On Joe Brand's team, we have Tony Hawks and Ricky Tomlinson, and joining Alistair tonight, it's Debbie McGee and Sean Lark. <laughs> Lovely to see you all. Now, here's the thing. During the course of this evening, our teams will be choosing famous guests for a fantasy party. And I can tell you that the winning team tonight will be the one whose party guests have had the highest total number of intimate relationships. Yeah. I quite agree. <laughs> now, to start your party off, Joe, I'll give you a host, and your party will be hosted by Mr Jack Nicholson. And Alistair, your party will be hosted by Peter Stringfellow. <laughs> They've both been around the block, I suspect, but just how many times I won't reveal till the end of the show. Thank you. <laughs> right, let's start the quiz proper with our opening round, Famous Connections. The teams have to identify the different connections between four famous faces. Starting with Joe's team, first of all, what connects Edwina Curry to Dale Winton? I think that they're, they're, they're both having fertility treatment and her treatment's gone very wrong. I think she's in the later stages of pregnancy hmm. and Dale, as you know, is a, a male midwife. <laughs> He's standing by to deliver. <laughs> it's one of the largest pregnancies ever known in... Ricky, <laughs> Ricky, <laughs> Ricky, humans are mammals, we don't lay eggs. Oh, don't we? <laughs> or she's not human, which That's seems right. more likely. <laughs> Do they both like having sex with men? <laughs> I don't know, Joe. Has I he don't come know. out yet? Or... This, this is the, I think this is the connection, is that Edwina wouldn't be forced out of the cabinet and Dale won't be forced out of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> it's to do with their connection to a very famous person. John Major. Is the one... They've right. both had sex with John Major. No. <laughs> Does anyone here have sex with John Major? Anyone I have, I yes. have as well. <laughs> you no, have you not? Debbie? No, I feel really home. left out. I know Paul has. Oh, well, so. well. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you, Joe. I'm going to give it to you, Joe, because oh. the answer is that okay. they both admitted to lusting after John Major. Oh. Edwina revealed this in her diaries and said that she's actually had an affair with John Major. Dale confessed he had a crush on John ever since he saw him walking down the street. He thought, there's a man with nice broad shoulders. <laughs> Before adding, oh, my mistake, that's Edwina Curry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey. But Alistair, Alistair's team, can you connect for me, please, Dale Winton to Fidel Castro? Are they pen pals? <laughs> Is it carpet burns? <laughs> it isn't, but I'm interested in what you're saying. Now, I wondered if, uh, does Fidel Castro present the Cuban lottery show? <laughs> Where you just have to guess what number he's thinking of. <laughs> Nobody ever wins. <laughs> You get a box of cigars and a crab if you win. <laughs> <laughs> what more could you wish for? <laughs> yeah. Dale, Dale started out, I think, at Trent FM in Nottingham. Right. Did Fidel ever ring up to play Guess the Voice? <laughs> Not that we know of, Alistair. No. Castro was, uh, was the CIA trying to kill him, didn't they? they? Well, they're still, they're always trying to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> Are they trying to kill Dale Winton? 
the CIA, are they tracking Winton? Have they got a sort of Winton uh, agent out there? <laughs> who just can't bring himself to finish him off. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it to sound like that at all. <laughs> is, is it anything to do with sport? Yes, it is, Ricky. Oh, Because Castro is a fanatical football supporter of British teams. I like it, I like it. And so is Daily Boy. I'm not sure which team it is, whether it's Arsenal or... Chelsea, I would have... I'm sorry, I'm but it's, sorry. It's, it's, they, both, they both support the same team, Bob. Do you want to plump for a team, Ricky? Arsenal. Correct answer, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. <laughs> Correct answer. Yep. They both support the Arsenal. <laughs> yes, it's true. Dale has long been out in the open about his passion for the Gunners. Fidel has supported them since their 1971 double winning season. Let's move on either team. What could possibly connect Fidel Castro to Jeanette Cranky? <laughs> Was Jeanette Cranky instrumental in averting the Bay of Pigs crisis? <laughs> <laughs> I believe in Cuba Castro's catchphrase translates as Fandabi Dozi. <laughs> <laughs> Janet's mother went to Cuba on holiday a long time ago, and she is actually the secret love child. <laughs> Of Fidel Castro. You don't believe in that answer, do you? No. <laughs> Carry on. I think, it's, I think it's more likely that Cranky was born from that egg Edwina's holding. <laughs> I mean, there's something about... I mean, I think we have to actually discuss Jeanette Cranky and what a strange phenomenon she is. <laughs> okay. I think it's one of the genuine rites of passage of all people in this country, the day you realise that Jimmy Cranky's not a nine-year-old boy, it's a middle-aged woman. <laughs> It's, it's right up there with the Father Christmas bombshell, isn't it? That we didn't find that. If it was the other way, way around, if it was a middle-aged man dressed as a nine-year-old girl, mm. you wouldn't get on telly. <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't get on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie, have you ever met Janet Cranky? I have, yes. How big is she? That big? <laughs> I what, don't about know. four foot ten? About four yeah. ten, yeah. But in the States, they've never heard of her, have they, really? No. Oh, is that what you meant I by how I big is she? No, I meant... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, she's not as big as, you know, Michael Jackson, is she? Let's put it that way. That, that would be a real shock for Jackson, wouldn't it? You've got, you got Jeanette Cranky back to his ranch. I think he'd give up, wouldn't you? You like, you like, like the thought, I don't think you, Todd? I think he'd plead guilty. Yeah. <laughs> He'd say, OK, I've done it! I've done it! I'm responsible! Frankie's in the bumper cars going, Fang Dabby Dozy! <laughs> and Jackson's just going, what have I done? <laughs> oh, God. It, I know what the connection is, kid. I think that's, that's, Do you know what the connection is? Yeah. Hold your horses, I've got a serious play Poor on Poor old Jimmy fell off the beanstalk in Jack and the Beanstalk. Yeah. And Fidel fell after speaking for five hours on the telly. As he walked off the podium, he fell flat. You're quite right. That's the, the audience. That's the connection. Yes. Well done. <laughs> They've both broken bones on the stage. <laughs> Jeanette fell ten feet from her beanstalk just before Christmas. Vidal took a tumble live on Cuban television, and we can see that tumble right now. Oh, really bad. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said he went to the pool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on, the, on the plus side, he got two hundred and fifty quid from uh, you being <laughs> That's something. <laughs> Ricky, largely thanks to you, Joe's team, you've won that round. Well done. <laughs> and that means, Joe's team, that you get to pick one of these famous faces for your fantasy party. Here are Terry Wogan and Simon Cowell. Who's got the most notches on their bedpost? Wogan or Cowell? If those two dogs get to number one, I'm leaving the country. <laughs> <laughs> Has he got anything on under the, down, further Except down in that picture? Right? Yeah, an Alsatian. I hope an Alsatian. <laughs> <laughs> now, actually, if it went down an inch further, his trousers would be going... <laughs> <in front. laughs> yeah, they're part of his buckle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Joe's team, come on, remember the criteria. So, sexual partners. Sexual partners, well, what do you reckon? Well, well, Terry part. Wogan. You've gone for Terry Wogan, so... Uh, Terry Wogan joins Joe's party. For you, Alistair, uh, enjoy Simon Cowell. <laughs> 
The next round is a quickfire round called Celebrity Spotlight. Tonight's celebrity is the silver fox with the creosote skin. Part politician, part TV presenter, part perfume, but all man, Debbie. He's the one, the only, Robert Kilroy Sill. <laughs> here we go, here we go. It's quickfire, it's fingers on the buzzers. What was Kilroy's television show called? That is Ricky. Kilroy. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh. Oh, that's the end of that round. Only joke. <laughs> Only joke. He had a particularly bad day in December of last year, but why? That's Debbie. Father Christmas didn't come. Ah! ah. <laughs> it's not the correct answer. Oh, uh... it was, it did, Father Christmas did come and he beat crap out of him. <laughs> Is that the, uh, the day he wasn't made leader of UKIP? It uh, isn't, it isn't. Oh. I'll give oh, it, it's meant oh, to be yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, it's I know. He, uh, someone threw a load of uh, excrement at him. Is the correct answer. Oh, he was covered in slurry it. by, I presume, a kind of protester. Let's have a look at that. And there he is. Have you got the phone number of that blade? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a ginger beard, I love them. <laughs> Alistair? After that happened, I wonder if he said to him, How's it feel? Do you cover it in slurry? How's it feel? Do you completely coat it in shit? <laughs> we'll never know. Yeah. Which famous person does Kilroy most admire? <laughs> that is Alistair. Kilroy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else want to have a go? It's not the right answer. And that is Sean. A uh, shot in the dark, Zebedee. <laughs> It isn't. It's David Beckham. David Beckham is the correct answer. Oh, what does Kilroy claim as a national institution? <laughs> Alistair. His TV show, Kilroy. <laughs> Ginster's pasties. <laughs> Debbie. Himself. Nearly. Uh, Joe. The national institution for Kilroy. <laughs> His tan. Ah. What is Kilroy's favourite pastime? <laughs> Alistair. Watching Kilroy. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky. Getting sunburnt. <laughs> Phoning up Arabs and going, how are you then? How's <laughs> <laughs> <Let's see. laughs> okay. uh, Debbie, 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 Debbie. Gardening. <laughs> Respect. Gardening. Well done. <laughs> what is the name of Kilroy's new party? That's Ricky. Veritas. His correct answer. Um, what unusual thing does Kilroy have in the grounds of his home? <laughs> Sniper. Was <laughs> <laughs> any justice in the world? Wouldn't that be unusual? Yeah. Joe. An admirer. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? Anyone? And that's Alistair. Coventry City Football Club. It's... <laughs> well, actually, it's not so far away, it's a herd of deer. <laughs> Now, that is a very close-run thing, but, Joe, you've won that round. Well done. <laughs> it's, good. it's party picking time. You can choose, Joe. You won that round. You can pick between these two faces to join you at the celebrity party. EastEnders Shane Ritchie and mad Russian monk Rasputin. <laughs> Who do you think has had the most conquests? Well, it's got to be Rasputin, hasn't it? I think Rasputin... It's got to be Rasputin. ...had hundreds of partners. And Shane Ritchie? Thousands. Thousands. Ah. Oh. Uh, you had sex with Shane Ritchie? <laughs> Ooh. There's still time, though. There's still time. Exactly. <laughs> Joe? Yes? Debbie's married. Oh, Sean, really? I haven't been yeah. married all my life, Sean. Uh, haven't you? No. Oh. You were a bit of a goer, then, before that. <laughs> hey, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Come on. Joe's team. Rasputin. Rasputin. We go for the old Rasputin. They're going for the Mad Monk Rasputin, so Rasputin joins Joe's party. Alistair, you receive Shane Ritchie from EastEnders. There you go. <laughs> Next up, it's a round that we call Celebrity Biographies. Teams, you have to supply the missing word or words from the titles of the following Celebrity Biographies. Open to either team. Let's start with you, though, Joe, as we reveal our first biography. It's Pavarotti, and it's a something, something, and something. Chronic anorexia and me. <laughs> a thin tone. More fish and chips. <laughs> I think he's saying, two tenors and a fiver. <laughs> Thirty stone and counting. <laughs> Attach crane and lift. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, uh, eats, sings and leaves? 
Is, is it loud singing and that? <laughs> Popeye, Olive and me. <laughs> He looks like Pluto. I'd, like I'd like to read that. Yeah, <laughs> ah, well, there we are. We've learned another word, folks. The something and something. The hanky and me. <laughs> if you were very heavily made up, Ricky, it could be you, really, couldn't it? I, can sing, I wish I could sing like that, uh, lad, yeah. Is it, and you never see you and him in the same room at the same time. Well, you can't get to... <laughs> Whenever he sits in the room, you've got to sit next to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is that if I was very heavily made up, it could be me yeah, as well. well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to bring it to a close. Have is we it, got is it, is it the fridge and I? <laughs> it's not I, I so far the away, king and I. It is the king Who was that? Oh. It's Tony Hawks, the correct answer. The <laughs> king <laughs> and I. <laughs> Next biography, folks, is Philip and Elizabeth. <laughs> something of something, something. Well, Philip's laughing there, so somebody must be in pain. <laughs> Probably foreign. Yeah. Probably, yes. Or a little deaf boy has fallen into a pond. <laughs> <laughs> Results of cousins marrying? Picture of German tourists. <laughs> I'm going to give you another word. Here it comes. <clears throat> oh, that. Oh. Thanks. Confessions no of problem. a royal. Diary of a... Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> Confessions of a Randy Monarch. <laughs> That's a good read, yeah. isn't it? Randy Monarch, one word, like, Randy Monarch. <laughs> <laughs> Alistair? Um, I think the uh, book was written, you see, by, by Charles Brandon, who's a wonderful writer, great friend of the prince, and, and he wrote his book. Uh, a couple of years ago, he did very well last summer, in fact. Uh, did very well in the charts. Very enjoyable read. It's called Portrait of a Marriage. It's about their marriage. It's about Charles Brandon, you see. Correct answer, <laughs> yes. Correct answer. Portrait <laughs> of a Marriage. Thank you, and Alistair's team has won that round. Well done, Alistair. Oh. So, Alistair, Sean and Debbie, it's time for you to go party picking again. Your choice is between Jordan and Paul Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think has had the most liaisons? <laughs> hey, now, no. <laughs> Debbie, yes. we didn't know this would happen. You can just keep stumped, no. if you don't mind. This is like oh. me leaving my star player okay. on the bench. Well, it's like having Rooney on the Alistair. team, Alistair. I'm leaving him on the bench. Alistair, <laughs> she only knows about half of them anyway. Well, that's true. Can, I give, <laughs> can I give them a clue? No. All right. How are you going to do that? Well, I was going to say what number I am. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Yeah. No, I should think it's an equation by the time it gets to you, isn't it? <laughs> Alistair? I'm going to go for Jordan because we're man heavy and I think, you know, you don't want your partner at a party. Gone for Jordan. So, Alistair takes Jordan. That gives you, Joe, Paul Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> now we come to our last round, Moment of Passion. Each player is given the names of celebrities who their teammates have to identify. They'll be giving clues based on what the celebrities might shout out during their Moment of Passion. So, Alistair's team, please can we have your Moments of Passion, starting with you, Sean. <sighs> Yes, 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 oh, yes. You get top marks for economy, handling, safety and comfort. <laughs> this, this little lady goes from naught to nympho in 60 seconds. <laughs> the upholstery's a bit shot, but what do you expect? She's French. <laughs> Jeremy Clarkson. Yes. Correct answer. <laughs> Your next moment of passion, please, Sean. Fantastic. That was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. That's amazing. That was absolutely terrific. Pucker, wonderful, brilliant. Oh, lovely. All I did was drizzle a bit of sauce on it and it's ready to go. Jamie <laughs> <laughs> Oliver. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jamie Oliver. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> Debbie. Oh, no, is it me? I'm sorry, Debbie, your moments of passion, please. <laughs> I am not aroused. <laughs> I'm still not aroused. <laughs> oh, we're arriving. <laughs> Alistair? 
Queen Victoria of Britain. Well done, Debbie. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. The next moment, please, <laughs> Debbie. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Blimey, princess. No, hold on. A bit lower voice than that. Cool! Cool! Cool, blimey, princess! Oh, it's unmistakable now. Yeah, 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 yeah! Have you thought about working on phone lines? I didn't do it like this in prison. Oh, hold on a minute. I've got. Oh, oh, just let me Leslie turn Grantham. my computer on. Leslie Grantham. Ah, yes. Leslie Grantham. <laughs> Thank you, Devin. <laughs> Alistair. <laughs> Your mind's fashion, please. Oh, golly. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, 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 <laughs> oh, hey, oh. Uh, uh, oh, golly, uh, shiggity briggity, uh, oh, my golly, oh, uh, I, 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 uh, oh, wow. this is, this is, this is, this is, this is Jemima, this is, this is divine, divine, this is Jemima, um, I, uh, <laughs> Debbie! Well, I thought at first it was Boris Johnson, and then I realised it was Hugh Grant. It's Hugh Grant, right. <laughs> Alistair, your next one, please. Oh, God! <laughs> Oh, no! Oh, yes! Oh, don't just take a little, take a lot to! <laughs> oh, yeah, Debbie? Of course. Billy. Billy Connolly. Billy Connolly, well Billy done. Billy Connolly. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you, Alistair's team. <laughs> and with apologies, Joe, it's your team's turn to Billy give me their moments of passion. I'm going to start with you, Tony. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I happen to know you have a uh, G-spot concealed somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I've been looking for it for a couple of years. Uh, <laughs> do you mind if I get my friend Tony to help look? <laughs> Um, to main grid. To main grid. Oh, <laughs> Is it Bush? It's George Bush. It's George Bush. Oh. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Next one, please, Tony. Um. I'm so hot for you, I gotta take a breather. I'm so hot for you because you don't like your mother either. I, I, I gotta go. When I'm done with you, I'm gonna take you to some parties Cos I'm really sweet, I'm chocolate, I'm like Smarties I'm, I'm like Smarties Yeah, I'm quite like Smarties No, that mean name, is it? Yes! Go oh, away! Hey. <laughs> Joe, Very good. your moments of passion, please Calm down. Dear. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, dear. It's only an <laughs> orgasm. <laughs> Michael Winner. Michael Winner. Oh, yes. Well done. <laughs> Your next mode of passion joke. God. <laughs> On acid. <laughs> Haven't you come yet, booby? <laughs> <laughs> What's this hand doing? <laughs> Do that hand again. It's not the bloke who operates sooty, is it? <laughs> Matthew Corbett. Booby. Um, booby the nose picking, <laughs> the twitchy hands. Oh, John McCruick is the correct answer. Oh, Thank you, Joe. Well <laughs> Ricky. I apologise for that. Well, thank you. Have you had sex? <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, you're always standing up. He's going to rear up. Here he comes. <laughs> the moon has never looked lovelier. <laughs> this is one step for mankind and one leg over for me. <laughs> Let's 
from Chariots of Fire. <laughs> Is it, is it the first man on the moon? Yeah. Neil Armstrong? It is, yeah. Hey, great time. Well done, Matthew. <laughs> Thank you both. For those moments of OK, right, now we come to the big moment. Let's take a look at your two sets of party guests. There they are. That's yours, Alistair, Jordan, Peter, Shane and Simon. Hope you're happy with what you've done. Over on your side, Joe, we have Terry Wogan, Paul Daniels, Rasputin and Jack Nicholson. The winner of tonight's show is the team <laughs> whose celebrity guests have had the most intimate relationships. So, moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at the numbers. First of all, Rasputin, the mad monk, he has had 1,000 liaisons. Oh, well done, Rasputin. <laughs> Next up, it's Simon Cowell. Let's have a look. <laughs> 70 partners, and he made each and every one of them dress up just like him. <laughs> Jack Nicholson. Here he comes. It's got to be high. Sorry, Alice, it's got to be, hasn't it? Oh. 2,000 victims, Ricky. <laughs> no, but this is in one month, isn't it? <laughs> Where do you get these figures from? Where do you get... I mean, if someone just... They, there... They're all... Contained in the words of the people themselves. These are what they've claimed to have slept with. I shouldn't say what, that sounds awful. This is <laughs> as claimed... <laughs> as claimed by the participants themselves. Shane Ritchie. Here it is. Oh. It's one uh, thousand. And you didn't yeah. know there were so many Nolan sisters, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact it's an exact number. He just stopped at a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> right, that'll be for me. <laughs> Got the grand. <laughs> Terry Wogan. Here we go, old Wogan. Terry Wogan. Terry. Have you got high hopes, Ricky? Yes. You have? Yeah, well, well sorry to disappoint you, it's one. one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but Ricky, let's hope it was one big one. <laughs> <laughs> Who shall I go style. for next? What? Peter yeah. Stringfellow. Outside what are you expecting, Alistair? We just need something big. We need a big number. You need a big what? number. You do, you do, you do. And I think he'll deliver. He has, he's given you 2,000. 2,000! No, I think it's more Imagine like Imagine those bones rattling away on his bunk bed 2,000 times. <laughs> Incredible thought, isn't it? <laughs> Next up, Jordan. Jordan, you chose Jordan. Mm -hmm. And I think your instincts were probably right. However, the card says nine. <laughs> Nine. Respectable. Respect to those nine people for daring to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have to move on now to Mr. Paul Daniels. Come on, Debbie! Now, now, We're rooting for you, Debbie! <laughs> I hope it doesn't come as too much as a shock. Now, if my maths is right, and it usually is, Paul needs to have slept with more than 78 people to win the Crispy Rides. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Oh. 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 300! <laughs> 300! <laughs> Debbie, were you 300? 301. I'm 300. 301, 301 but it's the last one that's the one we'll all remember, because that was Debbie. <laughs> oh. So, Paul's done it for you, Joe, just like he does for Debbie. You're tonight's winners. Yay! Well done. Yay! Congratulations. Yay! That's all thanks to Tony. To Joe, to Ricky, and of course, thanks to Alistair, Debbie, and Sean. Good night. Dynamic duo Vic and Bob are in fine fettle in Catterick tomorrow on BBC Three at midnight. Keith Barrett's on BBC Two now, and don't forget more comedy to come here on BBC One at ten thirty-five. In World, shut your mouth. Tonight.